Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 2. Good girl, good girl. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. So thank you guys once again for coming along on the ride with me. Thank you again for just joining along the journey with talking about uh, Season 2. The fact that I was able to finish this in less than four years is already an accomplishment <laughs> in itself. Hopefully Season 3 will be a lot faster. I've actually already watched the first two episodes of Season 3, so hopefully I'll be able to get through that. My goal is to actually get it done before Supernatural supposedly returns in September, or October, or November or whenever in the fall of 2020. So talking about Supernatural season two, most definitely one of the most rewatchable seasons of the show, especially of the five core seasons. I know this because this is probably the upteenth time I've watched this season. I remember when my brother and I had to live in the same room because uh, there was painting and construction going on in one of our rooms and it took a lot longer than expected and we just kept watching episodes of Supernatural season two and we literally, watched this season to the point I think most of the discs are damaged. And I would also say that this is the season that really, really n nailed down the core of Supernatural. The horror elements, the brotherhood elements, the humor elements, and the entire grandiose scale of the show. The show really got a main narrative going in this season. Whereas in the first season, it was all about them trying to find their dad. There's a lot of filler episodes, Monster of the Week episodes. Not to say that there isn't any in this season as well. Everything's a lot more narrative based because their father died. We've gotten already the introduction kind of of the brothers, but we're still finding out a few new tidbits here and there about each other, about themselves. But also the other thing that's so great about this season, when I went through my entire review of this season, I only ever gave one episode a negative review. And there's a lot of rewatchability. There's a lot of really classic episodes. It starts off with a bang in my time of dying, which gave a little bit more of a backstory on the idea of ghosts, specters, ghouls, all that stuff but it also killed their dad. They had been after for the entirety of the first season and boom, he's dead. Started this revenge trip and then kind of rebuilding themselves as well as the Impala and starting to really take on more responsibility. We get introduced to the Roadhouse with Ellen, Joe, and Ash. Um, Joe Dirt wannabe guy. This was actually a big point of the show for this season and they completely destroyed it at the end with the finale and I've always found that kind of interesting that they didn't keep this place. They like tore it down, they immediately destroyed it and I don't know whether they had to because of story reasons or they just wanted to because I'm actually kind of curious to see whether Ash actually had the inf whatever information that Ash had because I don't even remember. Part of me is kind of wondering, I figured it out at the, in the second episode of season three, but those were great characters. I know some people had issues with Joe, but I like her character. Unfortunately, she wouldn't come back for quite some time after this season. And same with Ellen. Ellen was a great character and I was always upset that they kind of shoot her out of the show. And then we get introduced to other more kids like Sam. There was only the one kid that they came across in Nightmare, but now they meet Andy, they meet Ginger Snaps. There's the other guy who gets killed by Gordon, which by the way, fantastic human villain. Fantastic adversary for the brothers. Fantastically acted by Sterling K. Brown. He was first introduced in Bloodlust and he returned again in Hunted. I was really happy to see him return in season three. He actually, that is one of my favorite episodes in season three. I'm very happy that he's gone on to do a lot more things in his acting career because he deserves it. He's a fantastic actor. What was really great about this season is that, again, it laid down a lot of the groundwork about demons. Uh, we found out that possessions can kind of happen without anyone knowing and that un with born under a bad sign, which then birthed that tattoo, which I almost, almost, almost got, but thankfully I didn't because with how the show's gone on now, it'd be kind of... Ooh. The amount of sevens I gave in this season, I'm kind of curious to see whether it's going to be beat again until season five. Crossroad Blues is probably one of the best episodes to show someone who's never seen the show before. It incorporates urban legends, but makes it its own. That was something that I had an issue with with Hookman in the first season is that it took this big, big urban legend, but it basically did everything exactly like how the urban legend works. Whereas Crossword Blues is kind of a, a varied tale. The Hellhounds introduction 
terrifying, terrifying creatures still scare the crap out of me even now on the show. They kind of dumbed them down a little bit in, in the, the recent seasons, but they're still the one thing that still scares me on this show. This episode two would have a massive relevance coming around to the finale. And then the next episode, Croatoan, which is the first time they've ever had kind of like a zombie or a rage virus or an infection sort of episode. It's one of those episodes where they show you something that's gonna happen mid or near the end of the episode, then they cut back and they build up to that. This is something that obviously the show has done to death now, but at the time it worked with Sam's visions. A lot of twists, there's a lot of turns, there's some really cool stunt work. The whole thing is shot in like one specific section of Fort Langley. I love how it ended too. You thought that the guy got away, but in the end, Meg was there too, and oh, it's so cool. So cool to see all of the, uh, the little twists in that episode, and that was a seven. Another classic episode is Night Shifter, which uh, had Chris Gauthier in it. For a guy who is literally known for really one episode, he is one of the most recognized one-off characters in the show's history. The only reason why I didn't give it a seven is because the antagonist, the night, the, the shapeshifter that they're after, he doesn't really have any character. Everything is based on Chris Gauthier's character and then them kind of getting out of this situation, the introduction of Agent Hendrickson, and then the awesome use of sticks with Renegade at the end. Even if I didn't give it a seven, it still is a classic one. Tall Tales, where we got introduced to the trickster. I thought this was a great character because of how long it would go before we would really see his actual purpose, his actual um, narrative purpose. And I'm kind of curious to see whether Kripke knew that he wanted to have Gabriel be used as this character so early on. Then Heart, Heart is one of my favorite, favorite episodes of the show because there's so much damn drama in it. And it is a little bit sappy. Some people kind of don't like that aspect of it, but I think it's really, really well done. They took that drama aspect and then they toned it down, but made it a lot more relatable, a lot more familiar with what is and what should never be, which is a fantastic alternate universe episode. Not even really an alternate universe because it's all inside his head. It's such a great, great episode. One of the two that were ever directed by Kripke, which is kind of curious because I'm, I always wondered why he only directed this one and the other one. Kind of harkened back to when Whedon would come in to direct and write episodes of Buffy. Uh, not the beginning of the end ones, but he would come in in these middle ones, in the middle, like just spaced in here and there, and they always knock it out of the park. Most of the time he would do that, and that's what uh, Kripke did with this episode. And then finally, All Hell Breaks Loose, one of the best finale episodes of the show. The, the Yellow Eyed Demon's plan of the children come to fruition, with all of them coming in to fight in Border Town, which is a set that's in Pitt Meadows. And there's a cool showdown there. Sam dies, and which leads into Dean sacrificing his soul for one year of life to bring Sam back, which is the entire point, uh, the entire pinnacle anchor of season three, which is one of the reasons why it's my favorite season. The season ends on a bang. It ends on a damn bang, like a good bang, because it's the last good bang we're gonna have for the rest of the show, really, in terms of the five seasons. Like I said, only one bad episode that was a negative episode, and that being Roadkill, which I've made comments about, I'm gonna make comments about in my top five, best top five worst videos, um, but it's just a twist episode that loses all of its flavor once you've seen it. Sure, the first time it was okay, but even then, I kind of was a little bit questioning of why it was the way it was with the terms of why they had to do it on this specific day when they've been able to hunt ghosts and whatnot in any other day. I thought that was a little weird. And then also the, the, the twist, as okay as it is, watching it the first time, the episode loses all flavor watching it a second time. Supernatural season two is definitely one of the best seasons of the core five. It's better than one for sure. I tell people to watch certain episodes of season one, but then to watch the entirety of season two because season two is just when the show really got its hooks in to the core aspects of the show and it took it and it wrote it and wrote it and then it killed it. In the end, I'm gonna give season two of Supernatural a six out of seven. 
It's a great season. It's a fantastic season. I didn't give it a seven because like I said, it's, it's, it's not quite there yet. I think the only season that's gonna get that for me is either gonna be the next season or it's gonna be season five. It's one of the best seasons of the show in its entire history in my opinion. Those are my thoughts about this. Next video is gonna be episode one of season three. So make sure to give me your guys' thoughts on the Magnificent Seven episode, which is gonna be great. I'm, I'm very excited to talk about that. And then also my top five best and my top five worst Supernatural episode reviews will be coming up. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. The background will be coming back soon. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys are staying safe and I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, please leave a like and please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Anyways. Oh, she's asleep now. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.